Hi, I'm Pete Dempster from uh, the Institute of Transportation Studies here at UC Davis, and I'm about to fuel one of our two Toyota fuel cell hybrid vehicles. So when you open the fueling door, uh, you see kind of a, a different system. It's a high pressure valve, sort of like a, a big Presta valve on a bicycle tube. And um, as I mentioned before, it's a 5,000 PSI tank, so it's extremely high pressure. Just um, to give you some reference, um, a car tire is usually around 33 pounds per square inch, so quite a bit more. just like uh, any other car you just need to attach the hose and in goes the fuel in this case it's a hydrogen gas it's um, at very high pressure 5,000 psi or uh, 35 megapascal and it fills four tanks in the Toyota for a total of three and a half kilograms of hydrogen which has the energy content of about three and a half gallons of gasoline. So this is the screen on our hydrogen fueling station and it tells us a lot of information. It tells us the start date and time. Uh, it tells us the pressure that the, that was, uh, the hydrogen was in, uh, in the tank in, in the vehicle, 165 bar. That's what it started off as at 16 and a half megapascal. Gives us the end date and time. So this was a three minute fill. And uh, the final pressure was 350 bar, which is uh, 5,000 PSI. And we put uh, 1.88 kilograms into the, into the tank. Hi, we're at uh, our hydrogen station. And uh, this is where uh, we store our hydrogen. This first tank you see, the big air products tank is uh, liquid storage and uh, we store 1,500 gallons of liquid hydrogen. Uh, this is periodically refilled, and uh, the temperature in here is uh, approximately negative 450 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, so it's uh, very cold. Over here next, we have a, a vaporizer, which um, sort of this tower, and uh, essentially you have liquid hydrogen entering and, and passing through various capillaries where it expands and uh, turns into a gas. It's then pressurized at our hydrogen station for filling. It's pressurized to about 5,800 PSI and uh, the car is filled to about 5,000 PSI. So I'm standing here in front of uh, the engine of our fuel cell vehicle and it doesn't look like a conventional engine. It's quite a bit different. Um, the thing that you see up here on the top the big plastic unit is actually the power control unit, which is sort of like a computer. It's figuring out where it's sending all of the power. Is it going to send it to uh, the motor to drive the wheels? Is it going to send it to various other electrified components throughout the car, air conditioner, heater, etc.? Uh, underneath it, you have this metal box, and that's where uh, the electrochemical reaction occurs. That's where the hydrogen enters the fuel cell and uh, is converted to electricity in water. Water is the exhaust from the vehicle. And uh, underneath that, you have a big electric motor directly above the front axle, and that's what's driving the wheels. Um, and so it's a completely electric vehicle. There are batteries under the back seat and hydrogen tanks uh, alongside the batteries. Um, and the batteries are more of a buffer storage for for the car. So power control unit manages all the power, fuel cell creates all the electrical power, um, electric motor drives the wheels. So this is the energy screen in our Toyota FCHV and what it shows you is where the energy is coming from, where it's flowing to, and right now we're taking uh, electricity from the fuel cell and putting it into our electric motor, 
to drive the wheels. Uh, now it's coming from the battery, and uh, the battery acts as buffer storage. So uh, sometimes when the power requirement is too high for just the fuel cell, which it will be in just a second as I accelerate, it will draw power from both the battery and the fuel cell to power the electric motor. So right now it's pulling from both as we accelerate. And now as we decelerate, it's actually the electric motor is turning into a generator and putting electric power back into the battery. So it's regenerating during braking. And this is uh, one of the concepts behind hybridization of cars. That's one of the reasons why the, the Prius is so efficient and why it gets such good fuel economy, because it's taking advantage of regeneration during deceleration. It's a very open question right now. There, we're looking at goals for 2050, reducing greenhouse gases, and um, this is one of the technologies that shows long-term promise. Uh, the other technologies that show promise are uh, elect electric vehicles, pure electric vehicles, and then possibly plug-in uh, electric vehicles with biofuels, and so and hydrogen. All these have the potential to be um, completely zero emissions. So right now, it's it's a question of which vehicle technology is the most appropriate and has the best long-term promise. So batteries, despite you what you may hear, um, have not gotten to the point where they are um, uh, able to be charged fast enough um, at a, for a long, uh, many, many cycles. So you, can, you have fast charge batteries, but they haven't really been proved out over the lifetime. The safety of them has not been proved. So there's you know, there's great promise in, in batteries, and that's definitely a direction we should t take things in. And I, I personally believe that electric vehicles will take a, a large part of the market simply because even if you do slow charge, you, the energy input into electric vehicles is much less than, um, than plug-ins with biofuels or, uh, or hydrogen vehicles. But um, if, you, if you look at the, the cost of uh, hydrogen fuel cells, expensive right now, but there's a path towards getting those smaller. Um, for example, in a typical lithium battery that's maybe five kilowatt hours, uh, you have a, ba and that's like a plug-in hybrid sized battery, you, you have about a thousand dollars worth of lithium. And that's something you can't really get out of the cost. It's, it's a raw material cost. Um, and then the, those batteries cost 10,000. That could come down, but you basically have a a price floor on on batteries, and it's a lot of uh, mass to carry around, um, and you don't get all that much energy density. Hydrogen has higher energy density; you can recharge fast, recharge meaning refill fast. Um, and then plug-ins with biofuels. If we could get biofuels, ethanol, um, cellulosic ethanol that it's environmentally responsible uh, to create, then that might be a very good long-term um, path, also. But uh, you run into the limits of how much biofuel you can make. And so all these um, three technologies, electricity, plug-ins with biofuels, and, and hydrogen are now in a kind of a testing phase. And we're looking towards 2050. Um, and we want to see which one is the best alternative forward. And you, you need to concentrate on all of them to make sure that you, you give each one of them a chance.